My name is Teresa and when I turned 24, I got my first apartment. It was in an area of my town that was known for being very quiet, so I thought I did a good job at picking a location. My first six months of living there were fine. I bought a lot of Walmart and Ikea furniture and I settled in well. Then the atmosphere changed in my apartment. Well first, let me tell you that my friends were into tarot cards and witch stuff. One day they came over with candles, a Ouija board, and a lot of Hennessy. So there was five of us girls in my apartment, but three of us on the Ouija board. For the first 45 minutes of asking questions, nothing happened. We began to drink a lot more, and then the Ouija board became very interesting. Everything changed when my friend asked for the fifth time, is there a spirit here? The first four times, the planchette never moved, but this time, it went straight to yes. We thought it was one of us doing it, and everyone was blaming each other. We decided to ask the same question while all of us were barely touching the planchette, and before we could finish the question, it slid straight to yes. When I say that we were barely touching it, I mean, when it slid to yes, none of our hands were on it. Once that happened, everyone on the Ouija board froze and looked at each other. My other two friends noticed that we suddenly became quiet and stopped what they were doing. I then asked who did it. My other two friends on the board said that it wasn't them. Then I said it wasn't me. My other two friends asked us what happened and I told them that the planchette moved by itself. She then said that she told us not to play with the game and she left. Then it was four of us. We were all sitting in my living room, quiet, still shocked by what happened when we heard a dish fall in my kitchen. When that happened, every one of my friends told me that they'll see me tomorrow. It kind of pissed me off that they'll just leave me here by myself. So I went into my kitchen to see what fell, and it was one of the pots. It fell from my stove top, I just never knew how. So I went to my room and I laid down, but I decided to keep the lights on. As I'm scrolling through my phone going from app to app, I heard whispering from the living room, and I froze. I just kept hearing it. With all the courage that I can muster up, I got up and I walked slowly to my living room area. As I'm getting closer, I could still hear the whispering and all of a sudden it stopped. I walked in there and I turned the light on, but I saw nothing. I decided to leave the lights on. I walked toward my room. I felt something wasn't right, so I turned around, looked one more time into the living room. But as I'm turning around, I noticed something in the mirror that I couldn't see without looking in the mirror. I kept looking at it, but thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. I took up my phone to record what I saw, and this is what I recorded. I don't know if you noticed that, but there's a face in the doorway. After I finished recording, I left my apartment and went to my friend's house. I told her about what happened and she seemed very intrigued by the idea of me having a ghost so much that she ended up moving in with me until the end of my contract. And then I got out of there. Till this day, I've never played with a Ouija board again. This may make me look bad, but I have to share this story with somebody. I had a Tinder profile and on my Tinder I would leave my Snapchat due to me giving massages, plus other stuff. I also had a boyfriend at the time of this story, but he didn't know that I had a Tinder or a Snapchat. One day I received a notification from Tinder that someone liked me. 
I checked the person out and he was attractive. He was also verified, so I knew that he actually looked like his pictures. I matched with him. I messaged him first asking does he have a Snapchat. He immediately replied telling me yes. I told him to add me. He replied within seconds telling me that he just added me. After that I unmatched him on Tinder and added him back on Snapchat. I asked him where he was located. He told me where he was. It was actually very close to where I live. He then told me that I need to just get straight to the point. I like that because usually I have to ask people how they're doing and what they like to do, small talk. So I told him that I'm a masseuse, what I charge and how much I charge for extra services. I told him that I take PayPal, gave him my PayPal info, then I received the notification within minutes. He paid me for my most expensive service. He then told me that now I have to perform. I told him to slow down and we should discuss this. He replied by telling me there's no need to discuss anything because I told him the price for everything. When he sent that, my boyfriend walked in the room, so I didn't reply. It took me about 30 minutes to reply. I left my phone on vibrate, so I didn't notice that my phone had about 200 notifications from Snapchat. It was a mix of notifications of him typing and then sending me messages. From asking why I'm not replying to her, I better reply or else. I eventually replied by telling him to calm down. I told him that I'll refund his money because I can't deal with somebody like him. He told me that he's already made up his mind and he's going to do what he has to do. Then he used my real name. I didn't use my real name on Tinder or Snapchat. I don't know how he got my info. At that point, I blocked him on Snapchat and refunded him. After that guy, I deleted my Tinder and Snapchat. A week after that happened, I was at my boyfriend's house and he kept saying that he was getting notifications from his doorbell camera. He looked irritated. My boyfriend looked out of his front door, but he didn't see anything. So we were watching a movie when all of a sudden we heard footsteps on the back porch. My boyfriend slowly got up and walked to the door. He keeps an AR by the door, so he slowly picked it up, peeked out of his blinds and then he looked at me. When he looked at me, he looked worried. Then he whispered to me, there's a man crouched down slowly walking toward the back door. Then my boyfriend put one hand on the doorknob, took a deep breath, and opened the door as quick as he could. He yelled at the man telling him to get down while pointing the weapon at him. The man hopped up very fast with his hands up. He kept saying that I'm sorry over and over again. My boyfriend asked him who he was and where he came from. He gave him his name and he said he was there for me. That's when I stepped into the doorway as I'm on the phone with the cops. The man had on a mask. My boyfriend told him to take it off. When he took it off, I recognized him. He was the guy from Tinder and Snapchat. He kept yelling my name, but my boyfriend made him get on his stomach until the cops came. My boyfriend was confused and I explained everything to him. He really didn't care until we actually looked at the doorbell camera footage. Now we knew why he kept getting notifications. That guy was in the front yard the whole time I was there. He followed me. He literally low crawled from the front yard to the backyard. This is what was caught on camera. After that, my boyfriend decided to dump me because he said I was full of drama. But anyways, ever since that day, I actually got rid of all social media. I'm 28 years old and a few years ago, I kept experiencing strange events at my job. 
I was a security guard at a building that had multiple establishments throughout the building. One night while sitting at my security desk, a woman from the third floor nail salon came rushing down the stairs. The look on her face and her body language told me that something wasn't right. I began to ask her was everything okay, but before I could finish what I was saying, she frantically told me that she thinks that someone else is in the salon with her. That might not sound like an emergency, but at this time it was 10 p.m. and they had been closed for about an hour, and she was just closing up the place. So I let my partner know who was conducting a building check. He let me know on a walkie talkie that he would be back downstairs shortly. Once he came back to the desk, I went upstairs with the woman. As we entered the salon, there was a swinging door in the back of the salon that was swinging back and forth as if someone just walked through it. I yelled out that I'm security and they should come out. I drew my taser, entered the room and no one was in there. The thing is, there's nowhere to exit that room except for where I entered. We checked everywhere and found no one. That wasn't the last strange experience though. I received multiple complaints of noises and sightings of people that shouldn't be in the building. Then one day in broad daylight, the strangest of all the events happened. I was told the story by others who were there because I was on the fifth floor dealing with one of the many complaints. A young lady had exited the building and was physically assaulted by what looked like nothing. I mean, it literally looked like she was attacked by the invisible man. Those who witnessed it told me that there was no one standing there. This happened at the exit of the building, which also has a security camera. When we went to look at the footage, it freaked out everyone who watched it. And this is what we saw. As you see, something caught her attention, then all of a sudden, she went flying. We didn't believe what we saw at first, and it's still hard to believe. Eventually, she was fine, but she was just startled about what happened. I've never believed in paranormal, but I think this has paranormal written all over it. Thank you.